What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion tutorial for you. So as I move forward with this channel, I'm going to be creating multiple different playlists um, for getting started with various rendering programs. So I'm going to be covering things like Lumion, V-Ray, Inkscape, um, Unreal Engine, maybe a few more as well, just to give people a better idea of how to get started with the various programs. So over the next couple weeks, you're going to see a few different getting started videos as I kind of fill in the blanks on videos that I've already created that need to go in those playlists. So in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Lumion. So the way that it works, the, the interface, everything else. But if you're looking for the full getting started with Lumion playlist, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. I'll be continually adding videos to these lists as we go. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So when you first open up Lumion, and first of all, I will note that this has been made in Lumion 9. So um, this screen may look a little bit different to you depending on the version that you have, but if you have Lumion 9, it's going to look a lot like this. The first thing you're going to notice when you first open this up is your computer is actually going to run a benchmark. And so the benchmark is going to be Lumion testing your computer and seeing if it's really seeing if it's really up to running what it needs with your hardware. So that's going to run, and then you can always see the benchmark results down below. But it's basically going to tell you if these are green, then you're in good shape. If they're yellow your computer's going to struggle a little bit and if uh, they're in red then uh, you're really not going to have a very good time working with this you may want to consider updating your hardware so if, as you can see everything on my computer is in the green so now let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the options so when you first open up Lumion there's a couple different sections in here there's the start section which gives you basically six different templates so these are template files that you can use in order to get started creating something in Lumion, as well as some links down below um, that uh, take you to some useful blog posts. And these blog posts can actually be really helpful. I recommend checking them out. They uh, talk about different settings and other things that can really uh, help you take your rendering game to the next level. And then the other thing I want to note about this is if you hover over this question mark down here, um, Lumion will give you help for whatever's on the screen. So it'll tell you different things things about uh, where to go and what different things do so if you ever get stuck just mouse over this blue mouse button and then settings we're not going to talk about too much right now but you can adjust different things like your editor quality in here so if you have a slower computer maybe move your editor quality down to low um, as well as you can adjust your resolution you can turn on and off high quality trees and high quality terrain um, you can do a bunch of different things uh, we'll get into that in just a second um, there's also a couple options in here one of my favorite things about Lumi on is it has this collection of examples and so a lot of programs don't really give you good examples they just say hey we can do great renderings and they just kind of leave it at that well these are really great examples for seeing the way different things work so there's one up here for a beach house where you can test the skies and the inside of a house the interior is great for testing interior lighting and stuff like that um, this uh, kind of mountain villa is an empty house designed to help you practice uh, practice importing different objects in order to create a realistic rendering and then the Farnsworth house is a fantastic landscape a lot of the time what I do with the Farnsworth house is I actually delete out the Farnsworth house and I keep the landscape and you can actually bring in your models into that background and that's one thing that I always say about Lumion is don't always feel like you need to start from scratch so we have multiple different templates here if you want to use them feel free to delete out the uh, Lumion files and uh, or the uh, Lumion models and then import your own model in here so you don't have to do all the furnishing of the different uh of the different plants and everything else. And then the last tab is loading a scene. This is going to allow you to load your different scenes that you've created in the past. So you can see if any of you have followed my Modern House Start to Finish series, which I'll link to down below, um, where I take a model from SketchUp and I bring it in and I create a whole landscape around it and everything else. Um, so these are all showing up down here, but you can actually load the scenes that you've created before by doing this. And so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up one of the example files, and in this case, I'm going to open up the Villa Amonzi file. So I've done videos with the Beach House and the Farnsworth House, and I think this one as well. But this one's a really good one for kind of getting started. So we're just going to click on that, and we're going to open this up. And if you want to start from scratch, you would have just gone back to the home page there and selected one of those template files. And so when you first open up Lumion, 
you're going to notice a few different things. So the first thing is you're going to have a, an area up here that you're working in. Uh, this is your uh, build mode workspace. This is where you can actually move and adjust different things. You're also going to have a series of different options down here in the lower left hand side. That's where you're going to make different changes and add different things inside of Lumion as well as in the lower right hand corner you've got a bunch of different options for photos and videos as well as files so you can save this here and your settings and note that you get the same thing if you mouse over the question mark where this actually shows you the way that everything is going to work and you can see how this tells you in the upper right hand corner how navigation is going to work and so you can navigate by clicking and holding the right mouse button so when you do that that's going to affect where your camera looks so you can see I can look out into the ocean I can look back to the right um, so that's going to adjust the where your camera looks so to move around you're going to use the W a S and D keys so it's a lot like playing in a video game where if you hold the W key you're going to move forward if you hold the D or the S key you're going to move back um, a and D move to the left and the right and actually the Q key is going to move you up and the E key is going to move you down and so if you mouse over this you can see how this is actually listed on the right hand side of the page and then you can also move faster or slower by holding the shift key or the space key so you can see how if I'm moving forward and I hold down the shift key I really speed up if I'm moving forward and I hold down the space bar you can see how my camera really slows down and I'm holding the right mouse button as I do this and so usually when I navigate around in Lumion, I just hold the right, right, right mouse button down because then I can just move towards whatever I have my mouse over um, and I can move really easily by holding that right mouse button down. So that's how I navigate inside Lumion. And then the, the final thing about uh, this overall build mode workspace is if you look up above here, um, you're gonna have some d different statistics about what's being displayed on your screen as well as how fast this is being rendered. So you can see how I'm rendering at 54 frames per second right now. And a lot of that's driven by if you have a whole bunch of grass or a whole bunch of trees. Because if you look at these trees, there's a ton of different points and different things that are getting shown inside my screen. So the more of those this has to render, the slower this is going to be. So you can look at your frames per second, and if you're at like 10 frames per second, you may want to consider um, making some adjustments to your editor, like turning the quality down, so this can render a little bit faster. And none of that is really affecting your exports, which I'll talk about in a bit. And so if you look in the upper left hand side, you also have the option to show and hide different layers. So um, for example, right now my building is just on this one layer and if I turn that off, everything goes off. So you can set different things on different layers inside of Lumion in order to uh, really increase your performance. And I've actually made a video about that, which I will try to remember to link to down below as well. So that's kind of navigating inside of Lumion. So now let's take a look at our few, a few of our options down in the lower left hand corner. Corner. So editing inside of Lumion is basically broken up into four different categories. So there's objects, which are things that you bring in to your workspace. There's materials, which adjust things like uh, what's applied to the various faces. So let's say for example, I wanted this to look like something else. I could apply, I could adjust the color in here. If I wanted this to be more of a darker gray, I could make it glossier. Um, or you can apply different materials out of your material library. And I will talk about that more in a future video. But you can adjust your materials down here. And then there's also landscape editing. And so what landscape editing does is this allows you to adjust the landscape around your model. And so that's what my second video is about, but basically this allows you to edit the terrain inside of Lumion. So you can see how if I click and hold um, with uh, one of these tools active on this first option, I can adjust the height of the ground inside of Lumion and I can adjust things like my brush size and other things like that. There's other tools in here as well. So the water allows you to actually place water in here or the ocean. So I can turn my ocean on and off. You can see how my ocean is out here. I can turn that on or off depending on what I want this scene to look like. And you can adjust a whole bunch of different things about that like, uh, like uh, the wave intensity, the wind, the wind speed, all those different things adjust the way that this looks. So there's a lot of different things you can adjust there. You can also adjust what's applied 
to the ground in here. And again, I'm just kind of giving you an overview because I will have videos for all of these um, that you can get into them in more detail. But you can adjust and paint different materials on your ground. So for example, if I was to click on this edit type, and let's say I wanted to add a gravel material, you can paint a gravel material onto your different faces using these different tools. So you can also adjust the overall landscape presets. So like if I click on this, for example, and I want things to be a little bit more, um, like let's say I wanted this to be more of a desert look, I could adjust the entire landscape preset by clicking on that desert preset. So it's really easy to make changes and make these things look differently just by selecting different presets inside your model. So you can also import maps as well as turning on and off grass. So if you really zoom into the ground right here, and you look at it, you can see how grass is actually being rendered on the different faces. And that grass is fully adjustable. You can adjust the height, as well as how wild it is, lots of different things like that. You can also turn that on and off. So you can turn that off um, if you don't want to render quite as many points. So if you notice, right now I'm rendering at 57 frames per second. If I turn the grass off, you can see how I'm now rendering at like uh, 75, 78 frames per second. So you can turn that on and off um, in order to uh, increase your performance and do different things like that. And then finally, the last option in here is your weather. And what your weather does is that allows you to adjust things like your sun, where your sun is located. You can see how that's driving your shadows inside your model. So you can adjust the direction. You can also adjust how cloudy the sky is and how bright or dim the sun is. So, and you can adjust the different cloud types in here as well. So those are kind of your options in the lower left-hand side. And so I'll be talking about all of this more in depth in the future, but you can go into place mode in Lumion 9 and you can actually select different kinds of things. So let's say for example that I wanted to bring a car in, I could activate place mode by clicking this button. I can sort these by car and then I could click and I could actually bring a car into Lumion just by clicking. So you can see how that's really easy to do using place mode. And then all of these are adjustable and movable. So you can adjust the location that they're at. You can adjust the rotation. You can make them bigger or smaller if you really wanted to. So all of this is fully adjustable. And so like I said, we'll talk about all of those more in depth in the future. What I want to do right now is I want to take a look just a little bit at the, um, let's find a good room for this. The problem with picking this model is that it's not fully furnished. There we go. So we're going to find a good view inside this model. And then I just want to take a quick look at the photo modes. So these are the modes that you're going to use in order to export your rendered images. So once you've set your scene up using all of these tools, you're going to come over here and you're going to export either a photo, a movie, or a 360 panorama. We're going to focus mostly on the photo in this case, but this is where you're really going to get your great results um, in your photorealistic rendering. So we're just going to click on this button right here and, and so when you click on this, you can see how this brings you into a mode where you can adjust your camera view and what you can see um, and what, what your shot is going to look like when it's rendered. So you can kind of navigate the same way. I can hold down this right mouse button and move around in order to get the camera shot that I want. And then if you look over here on the left hand side, you have a whole bunch of options for different styles. And so there's a number of different preset styles that you can select. And you can see how when you select these different preset styles on the left hand side, these all have different effects associated with them to make your rendering look a certain way within Lumion. So there's a lot of varied effects like watercolors and sketches as well as realistic images. And you can see how these presets are going to adjust the way that your images look inside of Lumion. So in this case, I'm going to leave this on realistic and uh, I'm going to point you to the options down below here. So these options allow you to save and store your different cameras. So if you click on this button right here, for example, you can save this view and you'll notice that when I save this view, this creates a completely new scene with no style in here. We'll talk about that in a future video as well, but for right now, let's just create a quick style in this option. 
So we're going to have this option selected and I'm just going to go up and I'm going to select um, probably the realistic style. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to adjust one of my effects. So one of the things that got added in Lumion 9 is the option for real skies. Um, so your effects are your things that make your make your image look a certain way. So you use all of these in order to adjust the way this is going to render these different things. So for example, if I didn't want my scene to be so bright, I would click on my exposure and I would bring that down. And you can see how by doing that, the view in here gets adjusted. And so there's a lot of different things in here. We'll talk about uh, some photorealistic um, presets and other things in the future. But in this case, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an effect for real skies. So real skies are HDRI skies that got added in Lumion 9. They're very realistic and they allow you to create some really cool effects without having to put a whole lot of effort into them. So you can see how I can adjust and select different skies. And you can see how they, they affect the lighting inside your rendering. And they're also just really easy to use and adjust. So I'm able to move this back and forth. And so in this case, let's go for, we'll go ahead and go for a scene like this one. So now that we have everything set kind of the way that we want, all you have to do is click the button over here for render photos and you just click on this. You can select your view and you can select your output, your size. There's different things you can export as well, like normal maps and lighting maps and sky maps. Uh, if you want to swap in a different uh, image later or something like that in Photoshop, all you have to do in this case is just name your image and click the save button. And this is going to go through and it's going to render your image. So you can see how as this renders this, it's simulating the light and it's generating a really it's actually going in here and it's doing all the rendering for your different lighting and everything else and generating an image. And so once you're done with this, you can open this folder. You can view the image that you created. You can export it and you can do the same thing with the videos as well. And so the nice thing about this is you can save multiple different views um, based on the image that you're trying to, uh, the image that you're trying to create. So you can see how I can click back and forth between these different views and you can save all of these different views inside of Lumion. So that's kind of an overview of where everything is and a little bit of information on what everything does in Lumion. Like I said before, uh, make sure to uh, go down in the notes down below and uh, check out the playlist that has all of the videos from this series in it if you want to learn how to use Lumion. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.